हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आफ्टर अंडरस्टैंडिंग द कंसेप्ट ऑफ मास डिफेक्ट एंड बाइंडिंग एनर्जी टुडे वी हैव टू डिस्कस अबाउट न्यूक्लियर स्टेबिलिटी एंड आल्सो वी विल ड्रॉ द ग्राफ ऑफ बाइंडिंग एनर्जी फॉर ऑल द न्यूक्लियाई सो लेट अस फर्स्ट डिस्कस अबाउट द न्यूक्लियर स्टेबिलिटी सो इन द पीरियोडिक इन द कंप्लीट पीरियोडिक टेबल वी नो दैट सम ऑफ द न्यूक्लियाई आर मोर स्टेबल देन द अदर ओके that's why some of the nuclei which are unstable they decay they release some particles so why or what all what all factors are there which decide the stability of a nucleus that we need to understand here so here are three important factors which are important to understand the nuclear stability first is binding energy second is neutron to proton ratio and third is even even nucleus okay binding energy neutron to proton ratio and even even nucleus or odd even nucleus that type of categories now let us discuss first factor binding energy we have discussed already about binding energy that binding energy is the energy released when a number of nucleons make a nucleus in that event the energy released is called binding energy let us draw or let us draw this picture that how does it take place which we have already discussed suppose a number of nucleons protons protons neutrons neutrons they are making a nucleus that means now they are sitting together they were earlier separated or scattered now they are sitting together inside the nucleus so if this process has to take place okay so any process always takes place when the final product is more stable and when it will be more stable when its final mass is less than initial mass okay so final mass should always be less than the initial mass initial mass means mass of all the nucleons or this also can be said in terms of energy energy means mass into c square so final energy should always be less than means final products energy should always be less than initial product energy now when we discuss this energy comparison final energy is coming less than initial energy that means some energy is being released so this energy which is released in this event that energy is called binding energy say for example initial energy of all these nucleons was 10 joule and final energy of the nucleus is say 7 joule that means a 3 joule energy is released in this event so this 3 joule energy is called binding energy okay so what is binding energy formula binding energy means initial minus final energy this is the binding energy formula which we have already discussed now we have to discuss about that it should be more or it should be less for stability okay so for that we will understand two examples okay from 10 joule initial 10 joule suppose the final product energy is 7 joule so 10 to 7 joule one event is taking place or second event is 10 joule to 6 joule now which event is giving more stable nucleus okay which event is giving more stable nucleus so obviously in this event the final nucleus has less energy so it is more stable okay so one concept is final energy so final product energy should always be less for more stability and now let us discuss in terms of binding energy okay you see now binding energy released is what here 10 minus 7 3 joule energy is released here 10 minus 6 4 joule energy is released but this case is more stable that means jitni zyada binding energy release hogi utni kam final product ki energy aayegi यानी वो ज्यादा स्टेबल होगा सो बाइंडिंग एनर्जी शुड बी मोर फॉर मोर स्टेबिलिटी सो दिस इज सेकेंड पॉइंट बाइंडिंग एनर्जी शुड बी मोर 
So don't be confused with the two terms. Final product energy should always be less. Okay. And binding energy should always be more for more stability. Okay. So that's why let us conclude this point. Higher the binding energy per nucleon, more stable the nucleus is. So this way we have discussed our point number one that how binding energy decides the stability of the nucleus. So jitni jada binding energy kisi bhi event mein release hogi, utni kam binding and utni kam energy bachegi final nucleus ki, yani wo jada stable hoga. Okay? Let us move to our point number second. First, okay, now one such factor which will decide the nuclear stability is n upon p ratio that means neutron to proton ratio okay now uh, in the starting of the periodic table that means for the lighter nuclei so only in the lighter nuclei number of protons and number of neutrons are equal okay in the lighter nuclei side number of protons and neutrons are equal okay now but as we go to the higher side higher nucleus then number of neutron and proton you must have seen that they are not equal always okay so number of neutron and proton are not equal it means one of them is more than the other maybe number of neutrons are more or maybe number of protons are more now for stability which is supported that should be more should n be more than number of protons or protons should be more than number of neutrons for stability Okay, so obviously if we consider protons more than neutrons, means that nuclei in which protons are more than neutrons, then protons actually give rise to repulsive force because of their positive charge and repulsive force tries to tear off the nucleus. So here this will be the factor which will cause the instability in the nucleus. That means we should support this event n should be greater than p for a stable nucleus okay so this way n upon p should be greater than 1 for stability so the reason is written here more protons means more repulsive force which tears off the nucleus so this nucleus is unstable in which more protons are there in comparison to this nucleus in which more number of neutrons are there so this event means n should be greater than p or n upon p should be greater than 1. This is required for a stable nucleus. So if comparison comes that this is more stable or this is more stable. So you have to say in which n greater than p that is more stable. Okay. So this is second point which may decide the nuclear stability. Now let us move to the third point. Note down this. Third important point is the category okay that means if we write any nucleus by zx a that means z and a if this is if uh, z is also even number and a is also even number like helium for which 2he4 is there or uh, 6c12 carbon is there so these nuclei are the one which have more binding energy if we calculate the resultant binding energy that is giving more binding energy and that's why they are considered more stable than their neighborhood. Okay, so neighborhood. So this way, even even nucleus is most stable. Okay, so 2HE4 is most stable nucleus. So just in compare, just in uh, the neighborhood of helium comes hydrogen. So hydrogen will be least stable because its binding energy comes minimum. Okay, so it is decided by binding energy only. So one uh, observation has been seen that odd odd nucleus that means this is also one this is also one odd odd nucleus is least stable even even nucleus is most stable and even odd or odd even nucleus is less stable okay so like 3 Li6 it is less stable so this way three categories of the nucleus are there and that uh, that categories are denoted by even 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 odd or odd odd nucleus now you will see this effect in the binding energy graph let us move to that now now you can see this is the graph binding energy graph for all the nuclei so the graph is drawn this way uh, with respect to the mass number 
here be upon a binding energy per nucleon is shown and you can see the first nuclei is hydrogen first nucleus is hydrogen 1h1 so you can see its binding energy is very less you can see it is coming in the category of 1 per nucleon okay binding energy per nucleon is almost miss uh, around around 1 and then you can see just after 1h1 the binding energy is shooting okay it's increasing and its value is coming to around 7 so this is for which nucleus next nucleus is helium 2he4 so for 2he4 the binding energy is greater shown just after that again binding energy is decreasing for 3li6 then it is increasing for 4be8 then it is decreasing for 5 boron then for 6 ce12 increasing so this way you can see the binding energy is increasing then decreasing increasing decreasing why it is happening so because because the binding energy for so that's why these maximas or peaks which are coming in the binding energy graph they denote all the even even nucleus as we have discussed before that even even nucleus are more stable than even odd nucleus so if we compare h he and li h is this 1h1 he is 2he4 and li is 3li6 so out of all these out of all three 2he4 is even even nucleus it is uh, more stable that's why its binding energy will also be more that's why its peak will come H binding energy will be smallest because it is odd odd nucleus. 3Li6 is even odd nucleus so its binding energy will be more than 1H1 but less than 2He4. So this way we have the ideas that why we are getting peaks or maximas in the graph. So we have written here the reason. Peaks in the binding energy curve shows higher binding energy of even even nuclei like helium, beryllium, ca carbon, oxygen. This shows that they are more stable than the nuclei in their neighborhood. Okay, uh, you can also uh, give the same reason for this question. Why alpha particle is stable? Because it alpha particle it is related to helium. So it is 2He4. That's why alpha particle is stable. Stability of alpha particle if it is asked. You have to write down it is the nucleus of 2He4. So it is stable. Because of that same reason even even nucleus okay let us write the next point you can write one more point about lighter nuclei all the lighter nuclei that means 1h1 that means the isotopes of hydrogen 1h2 1h3 or all are less stable so they have the less binding energy so their binding energy is this much only here only all hydrogens appear okay point we can write about iron you can see that the maximum binding energy is coming for iron okay uh, highest binding energy per nucleon is for iron which is 8.5 mega electron volt per nuclei per nucleon so it is most stable okay jiski sabse jada binding energy aayi wo sabse jada stable hoga so iron is most stable nucleus that's why it is also termed as cold and dead okay cold and dead that means if it is most stable, why should it take part in any reaction? So it behaves like cold and dead. Okay. And after iron, after Fe, the binding energy decreases. You can see for heavier, heavier nuclei. Okay. Let us move to next point. Based on binding energy graph, two important questions are asked. First is how binding energy supports the nuclear fusion. So this is our fourth point which we are discussing okay so how binding energy supports nuclear fusion okay first of all you should know what is fusion reaction so nuclear fusion reaction means what two nuclei lighter nuclei if they combine and they make a heavier nucleus then this reaction is called nuclear fusion okay two lighter if they combine then they make a heavier nucleus so you can see uh, from our binding energy graph, we are seeing that all the lighter nuclei have less binding energy, okay, less, you can see, like hydrogen, if they have less binding energy, that means they are less stable, okay, so they are less stable like hydrogen. 
सो इफ टू हाइड्रोजन एंड हाइड्रोजन मिक्स मिस फ्यूज एंड दे मेक अलियम सो विल दिस रिएक्शन बी सपोर्टेड सो येस बिकॉज द डॉटर न्यूक्लियाई वर लेस स्टेबल हाउ वी आर सींग दैट दे आर लेस लेस स्टेबल बिकॉज देयर बाइंडिंग एनर्जी इज लेस सो दे कैन गो टू सम रिएक्शन दे कैन गो टू टेक पार्ट इन सम रिएक्शन इन विच प्रोडक्ट न्यूक्लियस विच दे आर गेटिंग दैट इज मोर स्टेबल सो हाउ वी कैन से दैट दिस इज मोर स्टेबल बिकॉज इट्स बाइंडिंग एनर्जी इज मोर सो येस बाइंडिंग एनर्जी क्राफ हेल्प्स अस टू अंडरस्टैंड द न्यूक्लियर फ्यूजन रिएक्शन दैट वाई फ्यूजन टेक्स प्लेस सो द आइडिया इज वेरी सिंपल सिंस द लाइटर न्यूक्लियाई आर हैविंग लेस बाइंडिंग एनर्जी दैट मीन्स दे आर लेस स्टेबल सो दे विल ऑलवेज ट्राई टू गो टूवर्ड्स मोर स्टेबिलिटी सो दैट्स वाई टू लाइटर न्यूक्लियाई विल कंबाइन टू मेक सच न्यूक्लियस विच इज मोर स्टेबल दैट मीन्स इट शुड हैव मोर बाइंडिंग एनर्जी सो दिस इज द प्रोसेस सो सिंस लाइटर न्यूक्लियाई हैव लेस बाइंडिंग एनर्जी सो दे आर लेस स्टेबल लाइक हाइड्रोजन so two lighter nuclei fuse together to make one heavy nucleus which is more stable example h plus h may make he so they were less stable that's why they combined they took part in a reaction and they made something which is more stable okay so this is about fusion note down let us write about fission our next point which we are discussing that is for fission okay fission reaction fusion we have discussed already okay so how binding energy graph supports the nuclear fission reaction so fission means what now fission fission means one heavier nucleus which is unstable it will break into two lighter nuclei okay one heavy nucleus being unstable it will break into two lighter nuclei which are more stable okay so this is called fission reaction so we can see since the heavier nucleus now see the graph to understand it with the help of the graph we need to see the graph uh, uranium is a heavier nucleus okay uranium is a very he heavy means uh, in the last of the periodic table it comes so uranium is the heavier nucleus now you can see that its binding energy is small its binding energy is this much only here binding energy was more you can see its binding energy has come down so uranium's binding energy is less that means it is less stable so this will be uranium it is less stable now it will break into two such products okay two such products so that its total a whatever was its total a it gets divided into two parts okay like one nucleus should be of x mass number so another nucleus should be of a minus x mass number okay so this way it breaks so what will happen so as it will break you can see it will get products almost of this side so here because the products are of on the higher side of binding energy so they are more stable that's why the fission reaction takes place so since heavier nucleus has less binding energy so it is less stable like uranium so this nucleus breaks into two to make two daughter nuclei which are more stable so what can be the reaction reaction can be that this u235 it breaks into two products barium and krypton now their summation of a should match with total a before because mass number a should remain conserved so whatever are products released here there may be some more particles with it but overall the uh, total a should match with the total a this side so overall what happens uranium it was on this side of graph binding energy is less so less stable now when it breaks so a comes little less that means if it is 235 suppose i say that barium has been produced barium's uh, mass is mass number is 141 so near at 141 the binding energy is little more and krypton krypton is around at 92 there are one small, small some small particles also released so krypton is at 92 that means the binding energy is further more that means the products have got more binding energy that means they are more stable that's why fission reaction takes place okay